All right, so now, all right, listen, listen, listen. I got to get the markers. First of all, uh, people who had sent out emails yesterday, I didn't expect that everybody would get a response by today or might not get a response at all. Uh, so that's just something a little extra that hopefully you will get a response as we go into the next week. So what you need to take out right now <clears throat> is you need to take out all of the facts that you looked up, all of the beliefs that you looked up, uh, the sheets you got from scientists in the past that you copy and paste and print out, all that should be uh, right on your desk right now. So take a little time and gather all your data, your charts, if there was photographs you printed out, any of that stuff you have for today. Ian, go ahead, you got it all sitting right there? Uh, get it all out, put it in a nice little pile so you go through it quickly. All right, so I have these markers. Uh, most of these markers should work well. If they don't, each group should only have one marker that works well. And I think we only need uh, four tables, uh, but we have a fifth one just in case uh, we need it. All right, so everyone has all their stuff out? All right, so let me, uh, let me start with what we're doing is um, we watched a movie uh, by Al Gore called An Inconvenient Truth. And in that movie, <clears throat> Al Gore believes that uh, global warming is uh, something that is very, uh, very real. And it's something that is, um, let's just say, destroying the world around us. Uh, something that you guys uh, might, you or your children or your grandchildren might be devastated by. Now, not everybody obviously agrees with Al Gore, uh, but you can see that in the scientific community, uh, I've been given all kinds of very nice uh, things from NASA uh, that demonstrate all of the points that Al Gore was talking about, whether it's uh, greenhouse gases and the amount of carbon dioxide, uh, whether it's air quality, the impact of volcanoes and volcanic ash, uh, glaciers and sea level changes due to the melting of glaciers and uh, also vegetation in the water cycle where we talked about precipitation increases on this. Today what we're going to do is everyone's going to get together in their groups and discuss uh, if Al Gore's uh, statements about carbon dioxide levels being extremely high presently and outside of what's called the normal cycle of carbon dioxide levels in the Earth's history and well above it. He made a claim that this is, this is where we're at right now, that we're above and outside of the range of Earth's normal cycle of carbon dioxide levels. And he said that it's going to continue to increase. Now I have the same graphs over here that he was talking about uh, that go all the way up to 1995. and. At the time, there were predictions made that the carbon dioxide levels from 1995 would continue to raise. In his movie was 2005, and in 2005, everything that was predicted when that poster came out, and I was given that poster, has continued to be true. And since the movie in 2005, a lot of you guys have gone out and looked for information on uh, these same charts. Uh, Trevor, you looked up one of those charts, right? And did you see the same, the same cycle since 2005 to presently as was described by Al Gore in the movie? Yeah. Okay, so, so he has mentioned that the CO2 levels are rising. Now the second part, which a lot of people have controversy uh, with, is that even if carbon dioxide levels are rising, why do you have to blame us? Why is it our fault that it's happening? Isn't it possibly from volcanoes or other actions? Uh, you know, is this heat from solar radiation? And I had you guys ask scientists. They weren't climatologists, but they were scientists. And what I was hoping is that they would give you information, uh, which some of them did, that said, here are places where you can find uh, data and come to conclusions uh, from scientific research that they feel is trustworthy or reliable. And then I was going to have you guys ask government organizations before the shutdown, 
that you felt might give you reliable information that are climatologists or people that study this. Now, I happened to work with this summer at, um, at a place called the Oak Ridge National Lab. And at the Oak Ridge National Lab, this is where the United States has one of the world leading um, scientists that study carbon dioxide levels in the world. They, they study all over the world. So this organization that's at the Oak Ridge National Lab is the organization that's primary focus is on greenhouse gases, the effects of greenhouse gases, and the levels of carbon dioxide and methane gas in the atmosphere. Next week, I hope we'll be able to get uh, maybe a, a Skype a web conference with one of the guys that leads this research. So he could tell you what he feels the importance of his research is. Now that's all one-sided. Now if you look at the news, what's going on in Washington right now? Uh, Taylor, do you watch the news? No. Alright, if I was to say, oh my goodness, what's going on in Washington? Could you tell me anything? No. Washington, D.C.? No. The government might shut down. The president lives in Washington, D.C. when he's not on vacation, and the government might shut down. Uh, what does that mean, the government might shut down? Is that anything that you guys should be concerned with? Maybe, maybe not. It depends, I guess, uh, at what age. Now, to me, I, I'm personally affected by a government shutdown because I get what's called tax returns. And I paid all these taxes all year, and they take it out of my paychecks, the state, federal taxes, and it goes to the IRS, and then I fill out a form that says, hey, can I have some of that money back? Because I'm a poor teacher and need it. And I send it to them, and they go, hey, this is good. And then they send me a big fat check, and I go out and party. Well, because the government might shut down on Friday, until it opens up again, they're not going to mail out any of these checks. And I, don't, and I don't know about your family, but we always get a check that we do something nice with the family when we get it back in uh, anywhere from April to May. Yes? Why is it shutting down and for how long? Well, it's shutting down because uh, everything needs to run on a budget that's agreed to. All the money that pays for everything, including my tax refunds, comes from a government um, agency. And if the politicians can't agree how much money uh, government agencies can use during that year, then they freeze all assets and nobody gets to get their paychecks or anything until they come to agreement. Right now, in, uh, in, in Congress, uh, they don't agree to the budget cuts. But what I wanted to bring out to you was something that's, uh, if you're not very political savvy, some of the things that they're very upset about, besides public broadcast channel getting paid, so that no more Sesame, nobody needs to pay for Sesame Street, we got the old tapes you can buy. They want to get rid of the EPA and the Congress, these uh, Tea Party people and Republican Party have come out and said, <clears throat> we want $61 billion in cuts. And part of those cuts are, we don't want any government money going to the research on climate change. So all these organizations that you see that sent out these posters on climate change, they should not get another dime for any of the research that goes towards climate change. And this is something that the Republicans are, are staff. They said the government's broke and climate change isn't real and we don't want another penny to go from Washington to pay for anything that has to do with studying climate change. So what I want to know from you, because I don't really, all I only know what the poster, they sent me a poster and they thought I got smarter about it. You guys did research. I want you guys to find out and see if there is any reason for anyone to study climate change. Right? So that's why we're doing this right now. As you're seeing, uh, some people agree and some people disagree. And I'll tell you, in Washington, there's more people that believe climate change is a hoax or false or not real than there is politicians that believe, like Al Gore, that it is true. And maybe it's because Al Gore came out with a movie. Now, Al Gore didn't make up uh, climate change, and he really didn't do scientific research about climate change. But I know this, because where I worked this summer, I met Al Gore, he goes to the smartest people in the world and he asks them what they think about climate change. Now, when it goes from that person's desk to Al Gore's ear and comes out in a movie, is what anybody knows how Al Gore might change these things. But the information that Al Gore gives us that's on these posters come from the best scientific agencies in the world. 
So I want you to think about that as you guys are passing around your data. All right? So go ahead, and I want you guys to get in the groups you had, and there's two topics we're discussing today that you need to fill out on these sheets. Al Gore says that the carbon dioxide cycles are above the average uh, Earth's average cyclic event, and Al Gore says that humans are causing it. So I had uh, you three right here, and I'll get your board. You're right here, and you're right here too. All right, so you four are working together. All right, so you need to write on these sheets. Write down everything that you guys got together and decide if it's important. Al Gore says your evidence that supports it on this side and any evidence that contradicts it on the other side. Whatever you guys agree on, you guys work together. You got Nick over there, he'll help you. All right, so get together. No, this is on the carbon dioxide. And then humans are causing it. Oh, it's good, good. Carbon dioxide, what's the level? Well, yeah, you want to have those out there? Look for the two, No, you want to see it. This is for the ground. Yeah, that's why we printed it out. Yeah, because you have it so you can present it just like this. What you're going to draw on here is your experiment that you guys decide on that you could test this in a classroom with the computer. Now remember, well, I'll just stop you for one second. The big whiteboards are for when you guys that agree on an experiment that you could perform to collect data, all right, write down what it is you want to find, what you're trying to prove in your experiment, and then write down the steps if you're using a computer to get, or going to websites, specific websites, or the type of data you would collect to test these ideas, okay? So that's what goes on the whiteboard. All the other stuff, evidence that supports or uh, contradicts it, goes on these sheets, front and back. Okay? Yeah. So you guys agree what is the best evidence that supports it that you collected? So write down, write down that as bullet points. All right? And then you agree, so you want three or five. And then if you have anything that contradicts that, you write down the other does our emissions like impact the CO2 levels? Right there. Uh, yeah. 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 Let's just yeah. say the, the CO2. Really? <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm talking about Just like ozone, yeah, depending on all the types of geographic features. But there's an overall percentage for every other area. So there's a room that measures how they relate to each other. Because, like, for this area, and for the eyes that will really check different areas of, like, human activity to see what the CO2 level is. If you did it, if you did that once, say, if you did New York City, and you did it for over 10 years or 100 years, then you would check for your city. If you pick different areas all over the world, if you did just that area by itself, then you see uh, something you can see, uh, verify for that section and see if they all then just the 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 And then right there, right? Okay, never mind. Now this has to be data data driven evidence. So, all right. So why why do you say that? So now you have to say that the graphs and what what this graph is. So explain what this graph is. Kind of like what you did right here. And explain where you got it from, and that it shows this. So that's not really. 
Um, no, this is what's the, the annual mean. The evidence would be how you explain the graph that represents this. how much they can get from the first year. And then at the end, we have another way. Um, there's a start to talk about the graph. Okay? Okay. Yeah. 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 Y
So she says she doesn't like like she's saying she's saying that wow the fact is that greenhouse gases and greenhouse gases are in gases so that would be the facts or data to this for but she says for what she knows she can't be on our you know certain uh, of that. So this would this one would be um, towards that humans are causing it. Because this is saying that we're producing greenhouse gases and greenhouse gases do cause global warming. Now this is we don't know artificially or really CO2 so nature does it, plants do it. We stop but but then what I see is being that it's part of a natural cycle. This one I see is saying that greenhouse we want to produce a lot of greenhouse gases. So this one I would say is your support. That one is that you look at records of ice caps. Ice cores. I will drill. Look through that and see if there's anything. So first you have to have a couple of them. No, do you want to go another sheet for the humans or? Yeah, you just All right, so. You guys are doing this? Good. I have to go and left the hall because I still have permission to coach it. So, I'll give you a good time last year. I'll cover it. You could. Yeah. Or if we just use satellite. I guess you know. It's going to have to be up here. Thank you. 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 No, oh, hello. <laughs> you can't be the worst guy. <laughs> well, we didn't, we didn't ask about that. We, we didn't ask about the temperature. Yeah. We just asked. I digress. Yeah. We just asked. Yeah. 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 That's a way above. That's a way of showing like that. You can't well, no, 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 no. Direct? Really? It's indirect. Yeah. We were looking for a direct experiment in some way that you could find out if it's true that CO2 levels are increasing. Since so so humans yeah. started, what kind of experiment that we could do? Well, computer, you have to think of data. data. When you have to think, it's yeah. I know, but how do they know that the ice at one point is not the last two hundred years? It's like near a city now. So you could look at um, data that represents all these cities that you know that are 
within the, the time that it was collected, and what those levels, how they might have been affected. Yeah, yeah, you go online, find places. So that would be that would be pretty good. Do we have to draw it? You write it out. You could try. Draw some. All right, you guys got your stuff all done. All right, so now did you uh, did you get a sheet that also you have humans in? So you got two points on here. You got you're talking about CO2 levels are higher than normal, right? And then you're talking about is it because of humans? Human emissions and that causes. So like you got that too. Yeah. So so. Uh, it's something now. People believe it's more. Did everybody? Everybody did something. Did you guys all? Did you put something on your table? Okay. Cool. And then you got your experiment. Yeah. All right. So I'm gonna give you guys a few more minutes. I want you to work on your experiment now. Uh, most people are finishing up what their experiments were, and in about five minutes, we're going to go around and start asking people questions. Right. So we should talk about the, the carbon emissions and the benefits. Just joking, just joking. Don't be a I claim that, right? That's trademark. It's mine now. Well, that one's what your name on? Compare CO2 levels from a lot of times to about 100 years earlier. What did you it's have? It's not. Right. You, so you did the heating part. How are we going to draw this? All right. Huh. Let's do a benefit. Huh. Okay. Here, I'm going to do the illustrations. Bro illustrated okay. by Ben. See, this guy right here is going to go Oh, bro, you're bad at Oh, dude, look. Don't look at the camera. Uh, I wasn't drawing anything. It was football. Do your little apple thing. It was football. You know how there was like an ice age? Yes. Was there also a really warm age? Well, you could say that. It wasn't, you know, the Earth's, the Earth's uh, temperature has fluctuated greatly over the span of time. So, you know, whether it's warm, like now, or cold, is relative to what else you're doing. So if you had a time that was really, really cold, that's one side of a cycle. It's really, really hot. Yeah, it should be the other side because you always have to be warm. Yeah, you know how they used to be ice caps? Yeah. 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 How do they know that yeah. we're yeah. just going to wipe out all that? Well, that's, that's the point is it goes back to say like 10,000 years or 100,000 years. Wherever they study these things, like Antarctica wasn't always covered with ice. Antarctica at the time was, was kind of more like it is here. Right? The, you know, the continents were kind of moving around the world. So whenever you look at uh, the CO2 and ice, it's only since that ice has been there and it's been that cold that the glaciers, whether it's, uh, it's landlocked glaciers or ocean glaciers, uh, it's, it's locked into it. So that's not the entire span of the Earth's geologic age. It's only a certain position. But there's uh, different fossils. They, they go back and they can study plant fossils to find CO2 levels in the in the actual rocks when sedimentary rocks formed. They can have bubbles in that too. And that can go back even farther than the ice. But those are, see the thing with ice is ice is guaranteed that when the snow fell, there was air there. So that's so that's guaranteed to be so ice, 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 ice. The CO2 concentration. Yeah, no, no, no. Mine are over. Yeah. Like there's, uh, there's, there's people yeah. that study uh, uh, so sedimentary rocks yeah. that contain yeah. plant fossils yeah. and yeah. could determine what the yeah. uh, yeah. atmosphere yeah. may have been. Yeah, I got blood. Yeah. Yeah. Those fossils were different. So there were, there were, there were many times. There was times when there was a lot of oxygen in the air. There was times when there was a lot of carbon dioxide. There was times when there was toxic. Fumes like uh, sulfuric acid gases. Acid rain. There was a lot of that in here too. Methane. So over the years, natural history, so what you're thinking now is that okay, so we use carbon dioxide, we have methane, but. What we need to understand is, like, sure, it's going to change, but what happens when it changes? What happens to us? Should we be concerned, whether it's natural or whether it's man made? Should we be concerned what's going to happen? Because if you look at the Earth's record, one thing you know is every so many years, 
thousands of you know, millions of years. Oh. Yeah, we can turn the board. Yeah. Wow. We could. 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 Wow. We all right, so you guys are, are almost done. All right, we got two more minutes. You guys are done? Yes, this quarter. We have the Tomorrow is full war. Are we doing that tomorrow and next week? We'll see. What if I just wrote this on the back? Can we write it? He's got that all. That's great. Let me know when you're done. Yeah, we're done. We're just putting the old one. It's a Sony moment. You guys don't mix the camera. Our sister is never going to be so. Dude, you freaking like Nate Ruffle. You guys are done. You guys are done. You guys are done. Yeah. 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 I don't know. I think it's good. It should be. Well, I don't know about that. I think it's said today, though, it's kind of going more just bouncing around the room and going to groups. What? Yeah. All right, let's go. We got eight minutes. Let's go. Come on, group. Hurry up. Uh, we've been done for like 20 minutes. <laughs> That's how you spelled my name. Yeah, you guys don't have much time. Like I'm saying, when they breathe in CO2, Nick, like, what did you guys do? Like, we just wrote, we had charts showing CO2. Yeah, they don't really contribute. They all have the same. They were out of my See, like, there was a pie yeah, there, but only yeah. half a pie. It doesn't mean that it was given a pie. That's what we're doing. We still have that last pie. So do we. We do too. All right. All right, here we go. Are you ready? Uh, Bailey, what do we got? All right, Ooh. Taylor, you ready? Ready. Okay, so we're gonna start with Taylor. Taylor, I'd like to know um, where's the sheet that we have that says all the uh, supporting evidence and contradiction. You should have that in front of you. Everybody worked on their points together as a group. You got that right there. All right, Taylor. What? Uh, give me one thing, Taylor, that you found uh, that supports. It's data-driven evidence that supports what Al Gore says about carbon dioxide levels being too. Uh, too high or above the normal natural cycle? Well, power plants burn coal for power, and the burning of coal produces large amounts of CO2, carbon dioxide. All right, so so, uh, so, how does that make it higher? Because it's like, woo! All right, so you're saying it's that a lot, you know? coal burning power plants exist. They do. And you obviously know they're burning coal, and they're giving off as a uh, byproduct carbon dioxide, right? Yes. Yeah? All right, so, uh, Steve. Yeah. All right, so, do you have anything that uh, that contradicts, or no. do you have anything that you want to add to what she was saying? Um, I can't. Uh, All right, so we said that we agree with the statement, Al Gore's statement, and we have data-driven evidence. From the websites that are what name some of them? Um, just just what the main what we wrote. What yeah, yeah, yes. Human emissions upset the natural balance of the carbon cycle. Man-made carbon dioxide in the atmosphere has increased by one third since the pre-industrial era. Okay, so you found data that says that as yeah. uh, as Taylor was saying about uh, industry uh, producing carbon dioxide as a, um, a side product that. The Industrial Revolution has increased. Data has proven. Uh, and show, let me see, that's a graph right there? Yeah, graph that represents it? In uh, Mauna Lao, Hawaii, for the CO2 concentration. So that's just in Hawaii? Yeah, that's just in Hawaii. But we have one from Antarctica, Antarctica too. Yeah. So you have, you have graphs, those are CO2 levels? From different, yeah, from places. different places. One of them's by the equator, and then yeah. the other one's by the South Pole in Antarctica. Yeah. And both of them show the same uh, trend. Yeah. Increases, yeah. even though there are no uh, coal burning power plants in Antarctica. Yep. Okay? Still. So why? Why if uh, Taylor, if there are no coal burning power plants in Antarctica, why would Antarctica show an increase in carbon dioxide levels? 
Well, why give it give one one what is one thing you think might possibly cause this to happen in Antarctica? I don't oh my goodness, I don't know. Guys. You got other people why don't you ask someone well, in your group? Prevailing winds may blow the CO2 emissions up to Antarctica. Are down, up or down, depending on where the world. So we have winds uh, circulate uh, the air, which is gas, and carbon dioxide being a gas in the air. The winds uh, in the currents could circulate this gas around the world, right? Right. Trevor, what kind of experiment uh, could you guys run to test if uh, Taylor's ideas about the power plants producing CO2 is above normal? Um, we actually have like data from four different cities that like our scientists have given us and like Parker uh, graphs that we had. This is the graph that she gave us. Oh nice. And this is another graph. So in Denver, which is our scientist's home city, or yeah whatever, she said that the carbon dioxide for parts per million is 350 and they, there's smog in it and there's brown clouds that are just above the city that yeah. that's what smog is. And in New York City, there's 300, and there's no smog, but uh, yeah. And then in London, it's in London, it's really high, so obviously there's smog. And when she said that when she was in London, that like a lot of a lot of times when she sneezed, she sneezed black because yeah. it was like there was a lot of smog. And then in Mauna Loa or whatever. Um, so you guys, she had data about Hawaii too. That's interesting. That. Hawaii, which is in the middle of the Pacific, is seems to be, uh, uh, say, a good test sub area for CO2 levels for some reason. Yeah. It was also the first place. I, I think they, uh, they put an observatory there because, yeah. like, volcanic eruptions and to see if that had anything to do with... Um, All right, so, so you... But you do see... There's volcanic eruptions in Hawaii, and even though this is 390, uh, London is 480. Are there any volcanoes in London? Uh, no, but there's a lot of cars, there's businesses. It's a, it's a big it's city. It's a congested city. All right, so what? Uh, so it shows that, like, like, the higher the carbon dioxide emissions, like, there's smog. Like, obviously, New York City is the lowest, and there's no smog there. So. All right, so uh, New York City's pretty congested, too, though, isn't it? Yeah, I think, I don't remember. She didn't say anything about New York City in here, but there was a website that I went on. So I, I heard you were talking about prevailing winds. Do you think that uh, the patterns that these winds travel in around the world could somehow affect, uh, say, places like Denver, which is high in the mountains, to collect more CO2 or smog? Than other cities? Uh, when it's going to blow it away from the cities up to other places. So yeah, could you like use your earth science reference table where the wind patterns are and then pick cities along different currents to see how either smog or carbon dioxide parts per million on the internet, you could look stuff up like that? Yeah. yeah. And test your ideas to see if, uh, if this wind uh, blowing around these particles has something to do with how it travels around or collects in different regions? Yeah. Yep. All right, Tom, you had something to add. What do you, yeah. what do you uh, first of all, uh, does anyone have any evidence? I'm going to ask Tom, but I'm going to ask you first. Does anyone have any evidence that contradicts what Al Gore says? Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to go back to you. Tom, did you have any evidence that contradicted what Al Gore said? Or? Not really. No? All right, so tell us what you have, what evidence you have that supports this, and a little more about Hawaii and, uh, and the research going on there. Mauna Loa is the site that they're talking about. It's the place where the longest record and direct measurements of CO2 in the atmosphere are coming from. So it's one of the more accurate and it goes back the farthest. And they measured how much it increased per year to parts per million. And the graph shows that in the 60s, it's the rate it's been increasing by has been increasing over each, every 10 years. And it correlates with the worlds too, because they did a global from different cities. And it basically correlates almost directly. Yeah. That sounds good. What, are, what experiment did you have there? We said, um, look at the recorded levels of CO2 from ice blocks um, over the last thousand years and see at what rate the CO2 levels have been increasing at before and after the 1900s. All right. That's like a lot of that sounds good. I want to hear from you ladies, though. You had something that contradicted this. What could, what could you give me about that? Um, it said that the Earth was gradually increasing in CO2 levels and in temperature, 
and it's just recently that it started to peak. So if we didn't interfere interfere with it, it would have continually went up. So you're saying there's data that proves that even before the Industrial Revolution, the CO2 levels was at an upward increase on the graphs from, uh, from when they were studying it. Yeah, we're just helping it along. All right, so we'll have to look into that. Tomorrow we'll be in the computer lab.